This last year in 2012 was an interesting year for me because I was thinking about when I first became an industrial hygienist and the HASCOM standard had just come out in 1986. And this year when the new HASCOM standard came out with the GHS revisions, it just brought back a flood of memories. When I became an industrial hygienist, the AFSH Act had been in place for about 15 years and we had cleaned up our workplaces trying to protect people and the MSDSs were coming out with, um, started coming out with the different occupational exposure limits and identifying the hazards for the workers and uh, providing information for industrial hygienists where we had had to dig in huge books and libraries and scrounge to get information. And so the HASCOM standard made a big difference early on in my career to be able to communicate those hazards and to develop risk management strategies. Well, recently when the GHS standard came out, it made me think back to how many OELs we had available on MSDSs and trying to do an exposure risk assessment without an OEL at that time in my career was very difficult. And so I was fortunate enough to go to work for a chemical company that really had great ethics and gave me an opportunity to set internal occupational exposure limits and to develop that as a career path for myself in addition to providing uh, industrial hygiene practice for all of the plants. Well, I spent some time setting occupational exposure limits and I decided that I wanted to do it on a greater scale and so I used those skills at AIHA on the wheel committee to set wheels and I've been doing that since about 1995. So what I would propose has changed recently is the expansion of hazard banding and control banding in my practice as an alternative to the OELs we can't seem to set. One of the things I became aware of is there are over 200 million chemicals in commerce globally and we only have about 2,000 OELs around the world. We're never going to catch up. We just can't catch up. We don't have enough experts and volunteers to set those OELs. And the countries can't get any more volunteers or interest in setting OELs. So one of the things with the hazard banding or the occupational exposure banding that I revel in is the case that we can all as industrial hygienists go and do the exposure risk assessment management now with the hazard bands and as we get more and more volunteers and we get time we can start putting up uh, the, haz the hazards into occupational exposure limits as we uh, move them through the hierarchy of OELs. So, in my career, I've seen us go from very few OELs and OELs not being mandatory to communicating OELs, but also to setting more OELs that are non-regulatory and setting occupational exposure bands and control banding as an alternative to put in the risk management strategies. And what I think this does for us is it takes exposure risk assessment and management strategies and keeps us involved as a profession going forward. We can be involved in TOSCA doing risk management, we can be involved in REACH doing exposure scenarios in risk management, and we can provide risk management strategies for a host of OELs with hazard, or for a host of chemicals with hazard banding to help our profession move forward and stay in business and keep exposure risk assessment as our core competency.